Hi, welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you how I built my brand new, absolutely wonderful, decorative sewing frame for bookbinding. Now this is something that I've wanted for a while. Um, it is going to make a big difference in the kind of books that I can bind at least easily versus like using the back of a chair to do it. Um, so I'm going to be able to do a little bit more medieval style bookbinding and also just provide more structure to my books and have it be a lot easier and faster than doing without the frame. So let's hop back a couple of weeks in time and see how the project started. Okay, so I have almost all of my materials. I just need uh, some router bits, the uh, polyurethane, it's not, I'm not going to use a stain because the wood is too pretty by itself, uh, the polyurethane to coat it with applicator, and then a strip of narrower walnut for the bar. So I'm going to go cut the wood for the base um, down to the 18 inches it needs to be, and then sand that, cut the, and then drill the holes, cut the slot, and then cut the bar. So the first thing that I did was get the wood cut down to an 18 by 12 inch piece. I got my dad's assistance and used his tools, thank you dad, to do a lot of this project. If you want to do this on a tighter budget than I did, because um, I splurged and got walnut, <laughs> you can always buy the exact length piece you need in something like a poplar, which is still a hardwood, at Home Depot or a lot of other hardware stores will sell exact lengths like that. The next thing I did was cut down my narrow piece, which is a one and a half inch wide piece of walnut to match that 18 inches. I measured where my quarter inch holes needed to be for my bolts on the base as well as on the top bar because they needed to be in the same place on both pieces as well as where the slot needed to be. The Holes for the bolts are three quarters of an inch in from the side and an inch and a quarter back from the front. And then my slot is a full inch away from the edge of the bolt holes and a full inch from the front. So after we had the narrow piece of walnut cut down for my top bar and the holes were measured, I drilled them both in the base and the bar. I used this really handy little uh, tool so that my holes were actually perpendicular to the wood rather than being on some kind of angle on accident because unfortunately that happened when I made my book press and I didn't realize it at the time. Once I had all of my holes drilled, um, we ended up using a jigsaw to make the slot in the front for my keys, uh, which are what hold your either um, cord or your linen tape down in and keep everything taut. We also used the jigsaw to shape the top bar so that it had these uh, rounder ends and then a narrower center, which is more conducive to tying the cords around. Once everything was cut, drilled, etc., I sanded everything down. Uh, we used an orbital sander to get a really nice finish on this so that it, there were no scratches going against the grain or anything like that. And then it was time to move back inside and do some of the decorative work. I created a template on a piece of paper of a vine and leaf motif, um, and then I scanned it into my computer, flipped the image, and printed a copy of both directions out so that they were the exact same size. And then with that template, I used a foil quill that I got for really, really cheap from, I think, Joanne, but I cannot remember, <laughs> to apply a nice gold foil design to the base. I was going to use a paint, but I did not actually like how that finish looked, so gold foil it was. Once I had felt like the foil was really on there and set, I used a brush and dusted off my piece of wood. I actually ended up vacuuming the whole thing as well just to make really sure that it was clean, and applied a polyurethane clear coat, which I got in a satin finish, to both the base piece and the top bar. I let that dry for an hour for each piece, and then rain threatened, so I had to actually finish this part the next day. So once I felt confident that, you know, rain wasn't going to spoil my project, I sanded everything down 
to get a really smooth uh, coat and then reapplied the polyurethane to get my good second coat on. I let that dry and cure for three days uh, as is recommended on the specific uh, polyurethane that I got because I really wanted to make sure I wasn't going to accidentally like put dents or fingerprints in it. I've done that before <laughs> and it doesn't look great. So once that was done, I went ahead and I attached the legs. You might notice these are the same legs that I used on my book press. I had a whole bunch of them left and I actually still have a bunch. So don't be surprised if this is not the last time that you see these. <laughs> Once I had the legs on and everything was sealed and finished, it was time to do the final assembly. Okay, so I took my threaded rods that I have, they're 12 inches long and quarter inch, uh, size 20, so coarse threads. And I attached a locking nut to the bottom and then a washer, threaded it up through the wood and then put another washer and then a regular brass nut because I wanted, you know, that nice, brass and stainless combo that I had last time and then bolted that down and then once I had that on I did the other side and then I attached uh, a wing nut facing upward so with the wings down a washer and then the wood bar that I made for the top and then another washer on the other side and then of course my final wing nut which was wings up, so facing down. And then just to cap it all off, I used a acorn nut to cap off the top so that I didn't have any sharp edges pop like anywhere on this whole thing. And then I did that on the other side and the sewing frame was complete. If you enjoyed today's video go ahead and subscribe so that you can see more fantasy bookbinding sewing and crafts and whatever else i end up throwing on this channel <laughs> see you next time